Okay, first go into the options, and under the miscellaneous tab, change the coordinate display setting from lat long to MGRS. Now the F10 map in the sim will show your cursor's location as MGRS. Now you can turn map locations into detailed coordinates just by mousing over them. That's 90% of the work solved right there. Alright, this video is going to teach you everything you need to know about the Military Grid Reference System, or MGRS. Even if you don't regularly fly the A-10, keep watching. This is something pretty much everyone has a use for. If you're in an F-15 and you hear a request for assistance at Grid Foxtrot Hotel 87, you need to be able to quickly find the grid they're talking about on the map so you can orient yourself toward it. If you're transporting troops in a Huey, and you're heading to a target that may not be marked on a map, MGRS gives you an easier way to find it in situations where a detailed talk on may not be possible. The grid squares marked on the map are 10 kilometers on a side, after all. That's a lot of area to survey while in a hostile airspace. So you'll need something more detailed even when they're not explicitly marked. Also, although latitude and longitude are more familiar to most people, MGRS is much easier to use over voice comms. Since Lat Long has to cover the entire world, and individual MGRS maps only cover a relatively small portion of it, an MGRS coordinate rarely needs to be more than eight digits long, two letters and six numbers, and frequently only four. Golf Golf 5-7 is a lot easier both to say and remember than a whole string of latitude and longitude values. An MGRS coordinate consists of two letters followed by two sets of up to five numbers. Very simply, the first set of numbers is how far east the coordinate is in that lettered square, and the second set is how far north. See how the first set is increasing as I move the cursor to the right? And the second set will increase as I move the cursor up. Once it reaches 99999, it rolls over to 0000, and the letters change. The letters are also set up so that the first letter increases as you go east, and the second increases as you go north. So the grid north of Echo Golf is Echo Hotel. North of that is Echo Juliet. And the grid to the south is Echo Foxtrot. Since each additional digit is a tenth of the previous one, eyeballing locations even without explicit map markings is actually pretty easy. For example, to find Echo Golf 37, first I find the Echo Golf square. Starting from the southwest corner of that square, I know that 37 will be 3 tenths of the way to the east, and 7 tenths of the way to the north. Zoom in a little, and there it is. Getting even more detailed, if the coordinate is Echo Golf 3775, I can find it by once again starting from the southwest corner, moving 7 tenths east and 5 tenths north, and then you can see by the cursor indicator that I'm pretty much in the right spot, even without it explicitly being marked on the map. So here's a quick example. If I'm in a Huey headed for a target, and all I know is that it's in the Foxtrot Kilo 5-5 grid, that's 100 square kilometers to cover before I find the target. Worse, Foxtrot Kilo 55 is pretty featureless, so going by landmark reference isn't very useful. And while my buddy in the A-10 can give me a more detailed coordinate, such as Foxtrot Kilo 593592, the Huey doesn't have the sort of navigational equipment to do the math for me. What's a hard-working pilot to do? First, I find the grid that is marked. No sense in making things harder than they have to be. Then I move the cursor to the southwest corner, move it east until the first set of coordinates matches, and move it north until the second set matches. Now my cursor is within 100 meters of the target. Not bad for starting with 100 square kilometers. You also rarely need to worry about the final sets of digits in a coordinate. The full two-letter ten-number coordinate is detailed down to a resolution of a single square meter. Most of the time, just six numbers is plenty since it'll put you within 100 meters of the target. Ample for navigating or just spotting a target through a targeting pod. If you input a six-number coordinate into the A-10's CDU, it'll automatically fill out the rest with zeros. Don't forget to change everything to MGRS, or in the CDU's case, UTM mode. The LL button on the CDU, on the TAD, and in the control page of the targeting pod. One last note. 
You see this seam where the letters and the squares themselves don't really match up? That's because those grids are in two different maps. If you look at the cursor bar, you'll see that it leads with a 38 tango that turns into a 37 as the cursor crosses that boundary. If you try manually entering the coordinates into the A10CDU and get a weird result, check and make sure you're on the right map. If not, you can just type the correct one in easily. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about MTRS. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.